Actually, there's a whole lot going on in the world of Crohn's. It's actually quite exciting. Uh, you know, for decades, the only treatments that we had that were sound and, and uh, last resorts, really, were steroids and surgery. But they were reliable and predictable, but unfortunately, they take a lot of toll on patients. Surgery with the scars, one surgery leading to another, and steroids having untold significant side effects on the body. So the biggest revolution was probably in 1999 when anti-TNFs came out. You've heard of these drugs like infliximab, adalimumab, sertoluzumab, golumumab. And they work very, very well, but there's a, a good portion, at least a third, who will not respond. And even of the responders, they can lose response over time. And what we've learned is that there's not one mechanism that drives everyone's Crohn's. There's different types of Crohn's and different types of colitis. And for that reason, we've developed other uh, models or other drugs to therapeutically, sorry, to target uh, other mechanisms of action. So now there's multiple other new drugs in the pipeline, some of them that have uh, come out in the last one year and more that are expected to come out in the next three to five years. So anti-TNF agents are more systemic. You either get them through the IV or you get a shot and then they circulate throughout the body but they're not very specific to the gut. So one of the criteria of a good drug, any drug, is that it's site-specific and has minimal toxicity. So now the newer biologic agents, these are monoclonal antibodies, have been developed to target how white blood cells traffic to the intestine. Uh, these are called anti-adhesion molecules. So perhaps the most famous are these anti-alpha-4 integrins like natalizumab, uh, which was predominantly seen in multiple sclerosis uh, and used in Crohn's with great efficacy, but one of the side effects uh, was reactivation of the JC virus, uh, which, was, which is irreversible encephalopathy. And hence, they decided to determine if they could find out, if they could develop a monoclonal antibody that was more specific to alpha-4 beta-7, uh, which is gut-specific. Uh, so that's the advent of vitaluzumab, which also has good data, very good data for ulcerative colitis and, and Crohn's. Vitaluzumab actually is on the market. Natalizumab has been on the market uh, for, for years, um, but because of that JC virus risk, we've favored vitaluzumab. Vitaluzumab was approved uh, May 20th, 2014 for ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. There are other agents that are uh, either blocking a single cytokine or blocking an entire uh, sig intracellular signal pathway. So other signal, single cytokine um, uh, antagonists that have been developed are IL-1223 antagonists like ustekinumab, uh, which will probably uh, receive FDA approval for ulcerative colitis this year and uh, perhaps for Crohn's in the next two, maybe three years, depending on how uh, the phase three trial data come out. Uh, so that just represents two different biologics targeting two different areas in the pathway that may create Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. So this gives our patients more options than we ever had before. And not to mention all the other drugs that are in the pipeline that are coming down. So some of the other biologic agents that are being developed um, are blocking uh, intracellular uh, pathways. So the ones we've talked about so far, blocking one cytokine, so targeting um, uh, SMAD7. So inflamed colon uh, has a significant amount of uh, SMAD7. We've developed SMAD7 uh, oligosense uh, uh, nucleotide uh, that you do, uh, uh, intake orally and these actually bind the SMAD7 and prevent SMAD2, SMAD4 uh, from, uh, from their actions so that you can actually have suppression of pro-inflammatory uh, uh, cytokines. So this is going to be another revolution in terms of treatment, giving us more and more options. Very anxious, very anxious, I think, because, you know, Crohn's and colitis, these are chronic illnesses, chronic diseases, and when you're a patient's gastroenterologist, you are developing this lifelong relationship with them, and uh, it's more built out of empathy because most of the drugs that we have have limited uh, capability, so we are very eager to find drugs that can help our patients when they failed everything else. So if they failed anti-TNFs and re-challenges, then there's anti-alpha integrins like vitaluzumab or anti-1223 uh, antagonists like ustekinumab and more coming down the line. So more options means more hope. 
I think the part of the problem is that how do you find the, the best mechanism in which to engage the doctors who are out there taking care of the patients that we don't have access to. They're the ones who are taking care of these uh, rural or, or uh, less uh, urban city patients. I think the key is education and the mechanisms for education in this day and age are really through uh, media and the web. Uh, but getting that word out is the first step in getting these new drugs into the hands of the right patients.